Review videos don't come by very often on this channel. There's a specific set of criteria that has to be met in order for something to be worth making a video of. It has to be interesting. It has to be something that I've used for a long time, long enough that I'm comfortable giving you my opinion on the thing. And it has to speak to something more than just, hey, look at this cool thing I bought. Traveler's Notebook is one such object. Besides being a pretty cool product, the Traveler's Notebook also speaks to an interesting balance of form and function when it comes to designing for a certain target audience. So the Traveler's Notebook is actually a system which comprises of two main components, the case and the insert. The case, which is, you know, self-explanatory, is uh, made out of leather and it comes in these three sizes. I have with me here the regular size, which is the one that they first came out with and remains their most popular and flagship uh, dimension, if you will. The construction of this case is really simple. It's a piece of leather with a elastic band in the middle for you to add your insert into. Uh, what's interesting about this piece of leather is that over time it will wear and patina to create this like nice looking texture that is um, I guess unique to each traveler's notebook. And this case would be what you would build your whole notebook system around. And then now we have the inserts which are these uh, booklets. And that's where sort of the magic of the Traveler's Notebook happens. These inserts come in many different types. So depending on how you choose to use your Traveler's Notebook, you can buy different types of booklets. So for example, there are single line booklets, there are dot grid booklets. I have with me here the sketchbook booklet, which is made out of plain paper. It's a little bit thicker than the normal ones to support you know, using things like ink and markers and paint. It's also perforated along the edges here. So if you want to, theoretically, you could tear this out. To use it, you would simply insert the booklet into the elastic band right in the center here of the case. And voila, there you have it. This is the most default basic configuration of the Traveler's Notebook. You can also, with certain accessories, namely just a piece of rubber band, attach more booklets into the case. And at some point you can you know, this case would be bulging and huge and unwieldy, but if, hey, if that's your thing, then you can also, you can do that. And speaking of booklets, they also make some rather interesting booklets. For example, like one where the paper is washable or one where it's just all sticker paper. So you can stick and release and take it off. You know, that waxy paper that, you know, sticker backings are made out of. And then there's all these accessories where you can buy and add on to your notebook and make it this fun little customizable, personalized thing that's unique to you, or so it would seem. And that's all the brand image that um, the Traveler's company is trying to sell to you. This image of this jet setting, you know, person with like, you, you just go look on the social media and you, you just sort of understand the vibe where it's like vinyl records and indie bookstores and cafes. It's in the name and even in the smaller size, it's a deliberate choice that they called it the passport size and they, they made it that specific dimension. I've been using this traveler's notebook system for about a year now, most recently two weeks in Tokyo and then a month in Bali prior. So suffice to say that I'm kind of like the target audience, right? I've been using the Traveler's Notebook in the way that it's sort of intended to be used as a traveler. And it served me well. It served me well. I, I like it. I do, I'm not gonna mince my words. It's good. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making this. I'm not gonna make a video just to like rag on a product. Don't worry, I am, but that's, I, that's coming. But it's good. It has served its utility as a traveler's um, notebook, I suppose, or sketchbook. But very quickly, you start to realize that there's one other accessory that is sort of mandatory in order for it to uh, fulfill its utility as a travel sketchbook. And it is this thing. It is the zipper pouch insert. On one side, it has this sort of like Ziploc uh, pouch. And on the other side, it has two sort of slots for you to put, you know, flat stuff like paper and whatnot. So the reason this is mandatory is because, well, it's a place for me to put all my uh, markers and pencils and pens and uh, washi tape and, you know, stuff. The main appeal of the Traveler's Notebook to me is that it is sort of an all-in-one solution where I can just grab and go and, and that's all I need to take. 
you know, my pencils, my pens are all bundled in there along with my sketchbook and I don't have to have like bring a separate pencil case with me and my sketchbook. So it's just, it just, is convenient and in using it for an extended period of time i started to sort of have a suspicion that maybe i'm not the primary target audience of this product so back to the zipper pouch now there are other solutions for um, storing your stationery travelers also makes this um, pen clip and it got me wondering about who this really is made for it's certainly not for me because I don't just use one pen, especially not if I'm traveling for an extended period of time. Gosh, like can you imagine? That would be so boring. I want to have different drawing tools. So it's not made for me. And if you think about, let's say, a more casual sort of journaler, if you will, well then, wouldn't the journaler also be using more things than I? And if, if they were to just be using one piece of like uh, equipment, well, I would suspect that it would be something that's a little bit nicer, like a nice fountain pen or even like a fancy rollerball. And you wouldn't want to put it here because it would sit outside of the notebook where it's prone to damage and things and it could potentially also fall out. And I haven't found a use case where this clip is just is a better alternative to just having this. Which leads me to the one major pain point I have in using the traveler's notebook. So, okay, we've established that you absolutely must have this to use this, right? And let me just reiterate, the main appeal of the traveler's notebook is that it's convenient. It's an all-in-one package. I put it all in my bag, and then when I want to draw, I, I just take it out. I don't have to take my sketchbook out and fish around in my bag for like my pens and draw. I can just take it, it's all there but it's not really that nice to draw with. The reason is because of this. It, because of all the pens and pencils and just mass that I have in here, when I'm drawing, I'm drawing over it. All this irregular surface, and it is really, really annoying and not pleasant. In, in a pinch, it's fine, you know, I, just, I can just open it up and just like draw a few things on my, and I, I'm fine with that. But that's not really what the Travis Notebook is made for, is it? Journaling is like a, a hobby. It's like a slow, deliberate thing where you, you know, you stick your little stickers in there and your stamps and, and your ticket stubs and draw a little sketch maybe if you're like me. So it's, a, it's like a whole thing. And when I sit down and draw on the Travis Notebook, I find myself taking the insert out of the case, which kind of defeats the purpose of it to begin with. This mandatory accessory has now become its downfall, for lack of a better word. Coach, I was gonna bitch about this. You think I wasn't gonna complain? Now back to the target audience of uh, the Travis Notebook. It is, uh, I, I primarily, I presume, like a journaler. And look at it. It's, it's beautiful. The leather is like thick and high quality and oh my god, it smells so good. You know, there's all these brass accessories that look really classy and, and it, it's so Instagrammable. It's so Instagram. That's sort of the image that the brand is trying to sell to you. And in chasing that aesthetic and that form factor, they've sacrificed, if I do say so myself, a lot of its functionality. Now, Traveler's company started as an offshoot of Midori Japan. Now, Midori is also a maker of paper products. They make notebooks, diaries, calendars, and sketchbooks, of which I happen to have one of. This is the Midori MD paper sketchbook. Now, Midori is really famous for their signature MD paper, which is really freaking nice, by the way. Like, it's, it's probably my favorite sketchbook paper to use. Um, anyways, I digress. The Travis company uses Midori's MD paper in their refills. I mean, they're all the same company after all. It makes sense. That is to say that on the inside, they are virtually identical. But putting these two products side by side, it starts to become very apparent. The differences in the target audience that they're aiming for and also that sort of price bracket. The Midori sketchbook also has like a um, sleeve. It's made out of paper and oh my god, it's really hard to get out. Okay. And it is markedly cheaper than the leather cover of the Traveler's Notebook. It's sort of like a Lexus and a Toyota situation. Uh, a Seiko and a Grand Seiko. Looking at these two side by side, Midori slash Traveler's Japan 
it's sort of putting the onus on you, the consumer, to answer that question for yourself. Is the novelty and fun of all these you know, accessories and accoutrements and the B-side inserts with their washable paper and accordion books worth more to you than an alternative that is just as if not more functional and quite reasonably priced, frankly. I think these are two very different people. And as for me, I sit in an awkward middle. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.